Hello, here we are with another guest. Um, I'm really excited to talk to you because I don't think we have really talked to anybody with your scenario, which I know is an open was an open adoption. So I want to dive into that. Um, that said, we are meeting with one of our Patreons, Rizzy Shockett. She's coming to us from Ellicott City, Maryland, East yeah. Coast. Welcome. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you. So glad to be here. So <laughs> glad you are here. I'm we really, are. I, I, I was thinking back, like, have I don't think we have had anyone that's nope. had an open adoption. Wow. I don't think we have yeah. either. You've had how many? Uh, do you know how many people about you've had? So 65, far? right? Sorry. Oh, 60. 60. Yeah. So yeah. a few episodes were not. Mm -hmm. it's a, I mean, I, I know it's, you know, more of a rare thing, the open adoption, but I'm surprised there hasn't been any yet. So this is, this is even more exciting. <laughs> yeah. So what, how, like, what were the circumstances? Where were you born? Just dig in right away and tell us. Born um, not too far from here in, in Baltimore, Maryland at uh, St. Agnes Hospital. And uh, so my birth mother, you know, went through it. I mean, she, I guess we're going to start off on the darker side. She, she um, has been an addict and she was pretty much a preteen. So she uh, didn't really have much of a chance as far as getting her life together. Um, she had me when she was 23 years old. My birth father, I think was 40 at the time. So there was a big, big mm -hmm. age there. Um, my, there was actually, I forget there are two different scenarios, like how my birth family and adoptive family kind of knew each other. I think they had the same, like really distant cousins on one end. And then um, my birth father um, played pool a lot. So he ended up playing pool with a lawyer that was doing an adoption case. And, um, or, or no, he was a lawyer. And the my birth dad was talking about wanting you know, to, you know, get giving me up for adoption. And they uh, ended up saying, oh, I know this couple that's looking and then they got together. So through playing pool is how this came, this came about. <laughs> was Sarah, what yeah. Louise and I met playing pool. That's right. I was going to say, <laughs> oh, that's, well. that's not a bad thing. <laughs> yeah, no, I love it too. I'm really good at geometry. So. Excellent. So <laughs> were they to get like, were your parents together as a couple at the time? So my, yes, they were together. Um, they met, I think she, I think my birth mother was a waitress at maybe at the pool hall <laughs> where my dad played pool. So they ended up meeting, they got together. They weren't married at the time. They ended up getting married, I think hmm. two, three years after I was born. Did they stay married? They did not stay no. married. <laughs> no, not for, not for long. I don't think. Yeah. Yeah. So there's your adoptive parents they did not have children so they were looking to adopt yeah they weren't able to have children i never went into detail with them about that but uh they weren't able to have children yeah oh they they didn't have have they since shared stuff with you um not really i think um, my adoptive parents and i have a very complicated relationship uh they've oh. never been really open in talking about many things as far as their personal history and and the adoptive stuff I think when, when I was in middle school about I think I had some questions about things and I never felt safe enough to really ask more and like dive deeper into it so mm -hmm. yeah so we've, it's just been complicated did they have other adoptive children no I'm the only oh, one okay so you're the yeah um, okay. So going back, so your birth father says to this lawyer, Hey, I, we need to get, <laughs> we need to give up this baby for adoption. And then what, how, what, what happened next? Uh, as far as I know, they ended up meeting my adoptive parents and they clicked and I think they were pretty <laughs> desperate to give me up for adoption. And I actually know that my birth mother considered abortion and, um, my, Let's see, her sister and the sister's husband convinced her almost like right before she went in to have an abortion, like, no, you probably shouldn't. And they're, you know, firm, you know, believers in God. And like, they just um, weren't for that. And uh, yeah, so here I am. <laughs> here I am. And are you, do you keep up with like the family, you know, as you said, her sister, the aunt and any of those people? 
Well, yes. you you were in an open adoption, so you mm-hmm. kept in touch throughout your life, correct? Like, yeah, I um. So I would go. I remember going over periodically, like maybe once every couple years, growing up. So it'd be like you know a cookout here and there. Um, uh, you know, so I, I I remember meeting my um. I have a nephew who's actually similar, um, maybe two years younger than I am. Uh, through my my dad's my dad my birth dad had two children um so they had kids and then i remember playing with them cuz we were around the same age mm-hmm. yeah and, uh, and how, how is that how is how has it been like how's that going with your family your biological family it's actually been really great i mean again complicated stuff here and there with the birth family as well um but I I've always felt closer to my birth family. Like when I would be around them, um, we had similar personalities, similar sense of humor, Mm -hmm. um, music is in our blood. So I feel like we related on that level as well. And, uh, my birth mother, unfortunately passed away about six years ago. Oh, I'm sorry. Sorry. It was due to her addiction. Um, sorry. How did they, present this to you growing up so your yeah. your adoptive parents were were shut shut off to some extent from what you're saying to some extent yeah it was an open adoption so obviously they must have told you this okay this is your these are your birth parents did did you ever wonder like or ask them why am i not living with them why what's going on yeah, yeah. i don't remember asking them that i do um i know that my my adoptive mom incorporated my birth story into a bedtime story when I was little. So it kind of, I, I, I just always knew that I was adopted and, and I, I can't remember it, you know, word for word. It was a short story about, you know, um, a little girl in heaven waiting to be born. And she saw, you know, everyone else being, ad- you know, being born, going to their parents. And uh, she said, Oh, why, you know, it looks like I have two mommies and two daddies, like, you know, what's going on. And oh, well, this is, these are the people that are going to get, you know, give birth to you. And these are the people that are going to raise you. And it was just always a really sweet story growing up. And I appreciated the way that she did that. Comforting. Yeah. 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 To explain. And so when you were, when you would go over for the barbecues or whatever, would they come with you? Like, how does that work? Yeah. 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 And were they open with like, so they're not that open with you with questions and answers as Sarah was saying, but what, when they were at this, were they open with your birth mother or your biological dad? How did they, or did they stand off? Like, how does that work? I'm just curious. It seemed like, I mean, my, I feel like my mom, it's really hard for her to dive deep into conversations, but she's, she's really surface level and she jokes around a lot. That's kind of her coping mechanism. And um, so she, you know, like sarcasm and all that. So mm-hmm. but she'd be totally fine joking around with them, but I never remember any like really re- like real conversations when they were around other than I look just like my birth mom. And it was just a unknown thing. How yeah. was it? How was it with you and your birth mom? I mean, I imagine the early years, you know, you, but, but did you, as you got older and started to understand it on a, on -hmm. another level, was there, did anger surface and there was anger that surfaced, but I think it was more because I knew that she was an addict and, um, I, I was frustrated with her because, you know, we, we did actually end up getting, becoming really close when I was about 18 and I, um, you know, I, and I wanted to call her all the time uh, mm-hmm. we talked on the phone a lot actually. And then the anger would come from me. You know, if I wanted to tell her something, you know, call her no answer, no answer, no answer, no answer. And then she'd be, you know, days or weeks before she called me back. And then as soon as she called me back, it was like, nothing ever happened. So I think I started to become resentful that, um, I, I guess I wasn't respecting my boundaries maybe like as far as, uh, you know, I just kind of let things slide with her. Cause I, I don't know if I felt bad for her or whatever, but, um, I just really, really, really enjoyed having that relationship, even if it was here and there with her. Yeah, I can sense a sadness from you. It's, it, it's. I, I mean, addi- yeah, no, I'm not yeah. <laughs> gonna cry. The addiction's heartbreaking, you know, yeah. because there's the person and then there's the addiction, and I'm sure it was really hard for her too. Yeah, and she's just such a she. She was a 
you could tell that she's such a, she was such a good person. And it just, that addiction just totally took over, totally took over. Uh, yeah, as it does. It's a horrible, horrible affliction. Um, did she ever get sober at any point? Like, tr- like couldn't string together any time? Yeah. I mean, I want to say she was sober while I, while she was pregnant with me, but I'm not a hundred percent sure. So, um, I mean, I don't think, I mean, as far as my adoptive mom told me, I don't think there was anything you know, that they knew of that, you know, cause I think some babies would come out like, like withdraw and things mm-hmm. like that. Um, so I think, I don't think that happened, but, uh, that's a lot, just that, I mean, yeah. yeah. And, um, so back to the anger thing with her, yeah. <laughs> uh, when I was like 18, 19, I remember saying to her, you know, I got to a point where I was like, I, you know, I don't ever want to talk. I don't want to have a relationship with you if you can't be sober. And, and at that time, I think it was more drinking. So it was more alcohol. Um, and then I think I didn't hear from her for a little while. And then I did. And then I feel like she told me she was sober, but I don't know if I ever fully believed it. Yeah. Yeah. And and did she have any other kids? No. So your only siblings are your birth father's older. Yeah. And do you have a a relationship with them? Um, I did at one point. Um, I'm, I have a better relationship with my sister. Um, so it's a sister and a brother. Um, the brother also has, you know, drug issues. So we're kind of here and there, but, um, the sister, you know, we're pretty cool. <laughs> How much older are they than you? About 15 years. Oh yeah. That's <laughs> substantial. So addiction runs on his side as well. So, yeah. Yeah. At least, I mean, it's, it's good. You've had that knowledge early, right? Like yeah. you, you have to, I didn't, I didn't have any of that knowledge till, till I was much older that it ran rampant on both sides of my yeah. I was thinking that that's the benefit of the open adoption, knowing these things, your history. Yes. Yeah. And well, it's also interesting. My birth mother is adopted. So I I had that too. So she, I I was going to ask, did what like child, she must've had some childhood stuff, you know, that led to the addiction, but then there you go. That answered. Yeah. Did she ever find her? You know, her, her sister was also adopted, but it was different than others. You weren't. Okay. Yeah. 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 It was her adoptive family. Was that a, a rough ride for her? It's hard to say, um, because, uh, the sister that I, my aunt that I still talk to, I think it's hard for her to, to, um, go to that place also. Yeah. So. I feel like if I really sat down with her and be like, listen, like, I really want to understand more where I'm coming from, you know, and I think it would help me to see where your like, what your childhood was, was like, I think, I think she'd be open to talking to me about it. So. Well, yeah. you're doing things like this podcast and these conversations. I have a feeling they're all going to come in time. Cause it's a lot. You're also raising children. Yeah. And so you have a lot, <laughs> it's a lot to, and you're probably trying to process like being a parent with what you've gone through, I'm guessing. Yeah, for sure. I think also my son looks just like me and I look just like, like that's really, I was kind of, I, I I really wanted a daughter, right? (laughs) (laughs) Well, that's the only way that my kid will look like me as if she's a girl, you know, (laughs) but uh, sure enough, you know, my boy looks just like me. (laughs) Mine too. He looked, he looked, I looked exactly like my birth mother. And then now he looks just like me. Hmm. Yeah. It's, it's so, um, I can't, I can't describe the feeling of having okay, some, no, yes, so, we, we understand. <laughs> I'm sure you do. And it's, it's like, I'm not used to talking to people like adoptees. So like, it's, it's yeah. just, do you, do you, do you, uh, do you, have you joined any other like adoptee groups or anything? I'm you sure wanna... you, the fireside. No, no she's um, adoptees supporting adoptees. Oh, I just joined that and sent Sarah an invite. Like I'm late oh, to the know. game on that Did one. Did I join it? I don't know. There's like a good, what, like 20,000? Yeah, there's like 20,000 in there. I'm sure there's um, an adoptees connect in your neighborhood, in your area. Um, I, yeah, I, I haven't really thought to join any groups like that. And so so like, having, yeah. being, being armed with all this information, knowing that 
knowing both sides of your your adoptive and your biological family, I think to some extent that must, I can understand how confusing and simultaneously yeah, enraging, but also grateful that, you know, I'm sure those, those are a lot of swimming emotions. I'm, I'm assuming some things here. Did you at some point go, you know what? I know I'm connecting the dots here and I should, I, maybe I need some help. Have you taken any kind of route that way? No, I, no, I haven't. Uh, so is, I guess I'll give you another piece of information. I ended up when I was, oh gosh, 27, I lived with my biological father and his wife Oh, for about two or three years. And I got to see more of what he was like, um, you know, and, and who's to say what made me want to do that, but, uh, they welcomed me with open arms and it was, um, probably the best couple years of my life up until this point. And, um, oh, that's so great. Yeah. That's really cool yeah. to hear. I had a lot of freedom. Like I was able to, you know, I, I taught myself some guitar and just had a, a lot of time to think to myself and it was a uh, healing time. Yeah. 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 Are definitely. you still close to them? Yeah. Yeah. So I go to see them maybe once every six months I try. I have a question about this. So does your, your son now he's young, he's just kindergarten ish age preschool. Does he have, so he understands he has two grandparents, your other, uh, your adopted dad still alive. Yes. So he, he, does he get the whole, like, how are you doing with that? The balancing of these families for him. <laughs> it's a this, hard question. This is me busy trying not to cry right now. I feel like oh. every time, um, sorry, the air just kicked on. Hopefully the noise is still okay. No, that's um, fine. So yeah, every time, for some reason, every, anytime my adopted dad gets brought up, I get really emotional. Mm. Uh, our relationship, yeah, I mean, he's the nicest, <laughs> nicest person and also the quietest person I probably ever met. So um, it's really hard to talk to him about things, but we're, you know, just recently starting to get together for lunch and stuff here and there. And, um, but yeah. you know, so back to my son, he it's a little harder for, for him to comprehend things. All he, I mean, he has met my biological dad and he's heard me talk about my biological mom. And, um, I think he's still kind of, it's hard for him to understand the whole adoption thing. Yeah. Yeah. There he's young. I mean, my, my, my son had step grandparents and grandparents, mm -hmm. you know, so I, little kids, they just kind of they embrace whoever, and you don't, those conversations aren't even yeah. They're too abstract at this point, I think, but you made me emotional talking about I your, I, I have a similar relation, like with my adoptive father, quiet. Mm -hmm. And, um, I, I, I get that. And uh, yeah, the longing for something that maybe can't quite materialize, um, yeah. is tough. What yeah. about your, your mom, your adoptive mom? Oof. <laughs> that's, that's a hard <laughs> yes yeah, I don't get as emotional talking about her because I feel like um, there's been some we, we just had a really rocky relationship since I was a preteen like with her she was always the one um that made all the decisions and she kind of ran the household I feel like my dad was probably like her other child and um passive yeah yeah, yeah passive and and she was passive aggressive like extremely mm. passive aggressive and um I think I always found myself standing up for my dad as much as I could when I was growing up so I was always so defensive of him because he's just the sweetest person on earth and my mom is just so she's a lot a to force me. to be reckoned with <laughs> <laughs> yeah, again, a great, you know, a great heart, a great person, but I'm, I'm, yeah. I'm sure she's had her stuff growing up. You know, we all, we all can blame it on our parents. <laughs> no matter what. So, uh, yeah. Are they still together? They're still together. Yeah. Yeah. We're products, right? We're products of so many things. It's nice of you. You have a lot of grace, which is, you know, it's yeah, it's heavy. Some of this. So, um, 
when you reached out to us, you mentioned that you were now in a place where you're starting to say, would it have been better had I not Mm -hmm. been adopted, which I think every adoptee feels at some point or thinks about questions. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So what, what, um, how are you doing with that? Um, it helps and it doesn't help that my wife is a therapist. So she's kind of (laughs) <laughs> good, uh, but there's a of, good and bad yeah. in that I can imagine yeah come to a lot of feelings that I wasn't aware of before and come to a lot of trauma like she's the one that actually brought to my attention that trauma I mean that adoption is a trauma and that it um even if you're adopted at a day or two old like there's still that you know you're still missing something I mean it's you know you grew inside this person for nine months and um I think I can't remember if I heard of primal wound from your podcast. Mm-hmm. I feel like I probably did, but um, it was really hard to read. Like I found yeah. it um, maybe 20 or 30 pages in. I was like, Oof, I got to take a break from this book, you know, um, cause it just hit. I mean, I found me, me crying on about every page and just feeling for my birth mom and feeling for the child that I was. Yeah. You know? Mm-hmm. Sarah and I went through this too. It was a hard time to get through that for the podcast, you know, it affected us greatly. So I can, I, I like that. Um, it's good and bad that your wife's a therapist. Cause it's like, okay. <laughs> well, what's encouraging for me to yes. hear is that she is saying, look, relinquishment yes. is trauma because it was not, ever. it still isn't even any, any therapist I ever had nope. barely touched on that trauma. They, they, it wasn't just wasn't talked about taught um so it's it's really encouraging to hear that that yeah most of our guests that have been to therapy have said to their therapists i'm adopted nothing and they're like okay move on next this it is good to hear yeah i feel like the same with me i feel like even as a teenager when i had to see i was probably a psychiatrist at the time because i um, was put on some like adhd medication so i Mm -hmm. had to see talk to and um it was just never even talked about really. Like, I don't remember it being the focus and it should have been the focus. Absolutely. (laughs) It's, it's the most important moment of our lives. I mean, it, it truly is is the most important moment of of our lives to be separated from our mothers. Sarah and I have these off camera, obviously conversations, knowing each other as we do. And I was telling her recently, I've had these nightmares and dreams coming back a little bit, but remembering I went to a psychiatrist for night terrors. It was a bit, no one thought about that. I mean, it was just like, it was, I never, ever linked it until just a couple weeks ago. And we're how long into this podcast, right? Mm-hmm. All of a sudden I'm like, Oh, hello. But you think parents would say, Oh, something is going on. here. <laughs> Nobody, you know, so it is nice to see. Some Even change. though that information has been it has. out there and available, like I don't, some of the books we've read that, you know, yes. that way back in the forties, fifties, thirties, they, they knew how they bad did. it was to separate a child from its mother. Mm-hmm. Um, but yet, you know, other, other <laughs> motivations <laughs> took, took place. Yeah. And I, so we were saying about how, like, I'm dealing with uh, wondering if I would have been better off. I have, you know, of course, mixed feelings about it and um, so many emotions involved. But I think part of what um, uh, made me start to feel that way was my musical journey. Mm-hmm. And I feel like um, my my birth family, if I had been raised with my birth family, um, drugs aside, (laughs) like if I had been raised by my birth family, uh, if I had been, if I had actually expressed my musical interest, if it had been more supported than it was in my adoptive family. And I, growing up, I, I mean, I love to sing and growing up, it was maybe not on purpose, but I feel like it just wasn't a, I mean, it wasn't, uh, it just wasn't, as- it wasn't your, your artistic yeah. abilities weren't nurtured. Yeah. 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 I, I it wasn't in their wheelhouse. Similar, mm-hmm. Yeah. I, I, nobody even noticed that I had any kind of creative abilities or much less nurture them, but 
yeah, my both adoptive parents. Um, I mean, my, my mom has done some like scrapbooking here and there. And like, she, you know, started crocheting, I think more to deal with like anxieties that she was having, but, um, uh, but for, like growing up, I didn't see them, my mom or my dad doing anything creative. It was always work, 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 work. Um, me doing homework, 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 homework. And that was pretty much it. It's like, yeah. okay, homework to get to college. And that's what, that's what it is. And like nothing outside of that kind of. Yeah. yeah. Do Do you still talk to her? My adoptive mom. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah. Yeah. But, um, <laughs> in the sense that, uh, she watches my son from time to time and it's very surface level. We don't talk any about anything beyond that. It's really, really hard to talk to her about a lot of things. Cause I feel yeah. just, I feel judged all the time. Mm. Yeah. That's not a good Oh, it's the feel. worst feeling. Yeah. Yeah. And with, you know, going back to my birth mom, I never once feel, felt judged by her. And, you no. know, even if she wasn't with it all the time, I still knew I could tell her anything and I would be loved no matter what. And I, I can't say the same about my adopted mom. You have a, um, an interesting perspective here, having the sliding doors that you can see into, you know, because I feel when I'm with my biological mom's side, I feel very free about who I am. I can say anything, do anything. It's not silly. It's not, you know, and I did have some judgment myself a little bit for sure. And so just you hear, hearing that, I would never know my, I didn't know my biological mom, she's dead, but it's interesting that you can see into these windows and then wonder, you know, I would stay up late wondering if I knew all these things that, you know, <laughs> it's interesting. It it sounds like this is your 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 kind of uh, adoption journey, if you will, or the the mm-hmm. recognition of the pain is just kind of beginning. Yeah, um, you're at the beginning of the road. Yes. So, um, I'm glad you found us, and I'm glad you came on the podcast, and I'm glad you're starting this. And I just want to tell you, you know, whatever comes up please feel free to reach out to us and talk to us anytime. Cause yes, I you know do. how yeah. I can sense your rawness and your pain. Mm-hmm. And, um, and Sarah's right if, about the community, like reach out. I saw some adoptees the other day and a woman said, Oh my gosh, this is so great. You know, and she's been in it for a while to talk to other adoptees. And I'm sure there's besides Facebook, there's groups. It's nice in person. We're I'm lucky really- we have each other, but you have us too, as Sarah said, really, yeah. truly, we mean that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Cause it is, you know, it might not be appropriate to go to your wife for therapy. <laughs> <laughs> I might go to your wife for therapy. <laughs> On the other hand. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Sarah and I have been looking. <laughs> yeah. So, oh, she's just, I feel really lucky. Really lucky. I'm, I'm, that is so great that you, yes. you are able to have a great relationship with a caring, nurturing person and yes. have your son. And, you know, you have a lot of good a stuff lot. and you're starting this journey, you know, much, much earlier than many of us do. And so you've got a leg up on that. So, and this yeah. is going to be good for others to hear, you know, there's other people like you out there listening. I hope. Yeah. And if anyone wanted to reach out to me, I'd be more than willing to talk or share or whatever it is. And I'm, uh, I'm 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 really grateful for my situation as well. Like just in my family, I know I feel like it's our job as parents to do a better job than our parents mm-hmm. did. Yeah. And I and I um I I really believe that we are doing a better job than both of our, both of our parents. And um I I'm just glad that our children have a safe space at all times and it, it just that that feels good to me. So I feel good about that at least. <laughs> That's wonderful. Yeah. Well, it's thank a, you so yeah. much for coming on and, and we had to reschedule a couple of times. So <laughs> I'm really grateful. We finally made it happen. Yeah, me too. It's just that you, you have a great energy about you. You really do. It's, really it's healing for us. That. I'm really grateful that I stumbled upon the podcast and it's been, it's been really healing. And I think I mentioned on Facebook, I, was it Louise? I think that was in the, mentioned something in the, yeah. um, that, both of you just have such a warm heart and like, I just feel totally safe. And I just listening to other people share their stories. I, I was like, oh my gosh, I have to get on and do that. Like it just, it felt totally right. Thank um, you. And, and and thank you for saying that to others too, like in the, 
in the group that I wasn't a part of that. I just invited Sarah to, it, it was really neat to see another adoptee told me to look at that. And it was, oh, okay. it's really nice because, um, yeah, it makes me emotional. Yeah. We, we put a lot of work into it and we care. And this is like our healing. I was telling you today, you know, we all have these hurried weekends, but when Sarah and I are together doing this, this is healing for us too. So feel like I just had a therapy session. So yeah. <laughs> us, <laughs> yes, you're bringing up my maternal feelings for me some too. reason. <laughs> and, uh, that's, uh, oh, me too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We'll definitely going to stay in touch with you. By the way, I had your same haircut when I was, uh, <laughs> Like, it's like great. 20. Yeah. So easy, right? <laughs> oh, it was so, so easy. And I, I, I just, uh, yeah, I, I was, when I was that age, I'm like, I don't, I'm done with hair. And I just shaved it off. And then I walked into a restaurant. It was in New York. And this guy's like, Hey, do you want a job? Cause he liked my haircut. Awesome. Yeah. Yeah. A lot of opportunities can come from this haircut. It really can. Yeah. <laughs> it's super cool. That's yeah. great. All right. Well, well, please stay in touch with us and please. we'll see you on social media and all of that stuff. And and stay Anytime in time beyond mm-hmm. you want to talk reach out yes thank you i will thank for you, sure Ruby. okay thank you Enjoy your weekends you too you too bye bye thank you bye bye